Zeus ES, is it for you? Zeus Mark II ES is an incredible ship. It is just big enough for everything it does, and I'm going to go more into that as we go through this. But I thought the conditions of the raw parts of Hurston, just outside of Lorville, were a good solution to kind of show you a nice exploration gameplay, a place where you had to land in unique circumstances and maybe aren't the most amenable to larger ships. So I thought this was like a good spot to kind of capture that, that, that creativity and the desire to explore unknown places that may not have services for larger ships. Now this ship does enjoy a pretty large fuel tank, three shields to help you run away from things, and a few weapons that maybe if you don't want to run away from things. Uh, but I do want to cap that this ship is not exactly a powerhouse in combat. It does enjoy a large radar, which is an up, one size up from what it really should have. And its weapons, while they're there, are not exactly the most, um, how do I put this, uh, when you're by yourself, you may just want to run or use the missiles. You can fire a bevy of four missiles at a time and you can see them right under the floorboards of the front of the ship. So you can tell if your buddy's been firing off the missiles and you don't have any left, uh, whether you want to fight or not. In some way. I consider a, a missile as like a get off me type weapon. Uh, it gives you some time to break up distance and give yourself options to re-engage or to get a heck out of dodge. And because you have that large radar, you should be able to kind of dictate distance and range against most targets that have smaller radars that won't even know you're there yet. Unless you're off ship exploring a place like this, and then you are sprinting back to the ship to give yourself said options. No one wants to have to fight a ship on foot or a ship uh, from a like, cyclone or something of that class. Now, when we're dealing with a lot of this stuff on this ship we have to talk about the three seats at the front i didn't cover that very well in my hands-on first look at this zeus cl video but there is a gunner seat to the left which does have a gun that pops out of the center bottom of the ship and it does have its own pair of weapons it can free fire without you having to jump into the, the remote the remote uh, seat, but if you do that, you won't be able to steer the guns if you don't jump into the remote video. So as you see, you enter a remote turret, and then you can fire. So I, I present to you that you kind of, if you're really shooting from the hip and something's already being targeted by the pilot, you could jump in that seat and just add an extra amount of DPS. But really, you want to jump in that remote turret, because if they move even, even an inch out of the crosshairs of the pilot, uh, you're not going to be hitting the target anymore, particularly for higher speed targets. Because it's sitting back towards the back, it's not a chin turret, it's towards the middle of the ship, it does present an interesting combination of, uh, of good and bad things. One, it'll better defend the back side of the ship. Uh, so a lot of people will attempt to, to mess with a ship that has a chin turret, because they know it can't hit from the back, especially if they're in a blind spot. But uh, at the same time, it's uh, uh, angle of attack when it upwards. So if it was on a chin, you'd be able to aim, aim it up more. So if it was like sitting just under the windows at the front of, the, of that seat. Now, uh, the other thing about these seats is that they have a, a good UI decision. The screens for the left and the right seats are on the left, it's to the left, and to the right, it's on the right. And I know that sounds like a really small thing, uh, but between the live buttons and switches and the ability to operate those screens without having to block your visibility of your cohort, of your, of your, of your crew, um, I feel like it makes it more conducive for people to actually just sit in the seat and chill between, between fights and between explorations and whatever it is, and they'll actually use them. Additionally, I like how snappy the seats are and how the remote turret is in engaging. It's very quick, it's just, it's there. And that's what I want from something with a small weapon platform that's just additional DPS and additional helps against fighters type of thing. I want it to be snappy. Once again, the same thing with the co-pilot seat. I wanna give them a nod for the screen placement because it doesn't look right until the seat spins, but then you'll notice that the screens are not blocking your visibility of the other seats. 
So I wanted to start with this cockpit because this cockpit is actually extremely well done in the Zeus ES and the CL. And in my view, the struts are even done better. For the pilot seat, you barely see those struts at all on the left and the right. And to me, that is very important. There's a lot of players that will be running solo. There's a lot of players that will be running two up. Very rarely will there be players running three up. But even if they do, you can see that those MFDs are out of position. And you still have good visibility from all three seats. But you have the best visibility from the pilot who has to fly the ship and is pretty much in that seat 24-7. So, unless they're playing solo, of course. So, I, I wanted to cover that because I wanted to give both a nod where nod is due and also give you more of an idea and expectation of what you're seeing in the seats. Because you walk up to that cockpit and it's just, it is, it is imposing, it's impressive. But it is something that is worth mentioning, it has its limitations. Up top in the modules right here in the, is one of the three shield generators on board. And I, I like the animation where it actually pulls the pipes off of the shield generator uh, to help you take the module out or service it. And here is the first of uh, two weapon racks. This is a pretty large one. And this has the ability to fit a heavy weapon, three one, uh, two hand weapon systems or utility gear, four uh, yeah, utilities or weapons, and then uh, six one hand weapons. Now the old play system is completely gone now. It has been for a while. You'll note that I'm having trouble with it, just kind of showing how that goes uh, you have to use your F key for all of these things so just bear that in mind when you're working with these weapon racks but they are quite useful I like the fact that it's right inside the cockpit so if you're sitting in your seat eventually as a reminder uh, two hand type weapons and utility gear will not be wearable inside these seats of the pilot seats and such and uh, you will have to put them on a rack so being able to quickly equip equip and dequip and also protect your gear is important so you can see here you can equip or you can go right to holster and if you do the fast f key it just equips it so if you needed to defend yourself or you needed to quickly run to the cargo bay to help with something with the tractor beam you could uh, but as you can see those are now holstered on player character now the, the biggest thing that I, I think with a lot of these type of builds is how integrated is everything correctly like it's not oh what is it going to be like in the future it's more important of the no, three suit lockers it's more important of are they actually practically usable right now and the suit lockers are still a work in progress but you can absolutely see the airlock is more than ready to go just like the aurora cl it enjoys an airlock in pretty much the exact same spot where a large armored door opens and inside the airlock uh, opens up now, something to note eventually is that this area would be uh, would be empty or void of oxygen uh, unless there's a air shield that would go into that place. But that's kind of understandable because there's also a ladder that also does the same trick. It opens up to the outside and you can even leave it open. This is a room with your suit lockers. So if that is the future of Star Citizen, where one, once you finally open a door, it vacates all oxygen out of the compartment this compartment would be inaccessible to the pilot crew unless they're wearing a flight suit already that has the ability to breathe with oxygen, a deoxygenated environment, brings its own oxygen, uh, because they won't be able to get the suit locker quick enough, equip, and then uh, be able to breathe. There's the relays. Um, note this one is extremely easy access from the cockpit. So if this was to break, and it looks like it services the other two shield generators, the batteries, and... The, uh, which are a work in progress, and also the gravity generator, a bunch of critical systems. Now, uh, on the MSR, they started putting relays underneath the floor, or at least that's what I've been hearing. I've got to go over there and see it. Uh, that's kind of a pain point, to say the least, uh, crawling around those catacombs, not on purpose, uh, not for smuggling or something fun or RP or whatever. Uh, it, it being Having to use the, these things like the fire extinguisher and like relays replacing relays uh, it is important to me that they are in easy to access places places that the crew would know very well at the very least even if they have to run to them this relay for example is in an excellent position it's just outside the cockpit inside the kitchen you will note it is larger it's about a third larger 
noting there that at that bulkhead is where the CL uh, has their has their change up. So you'll note that the cargo bay is, is much smaller. And at this second bulkhead that's here, that's where the Aurora CL, sorry, the Zeus CL, the Zeus CL uh, has their doorway. I did also note that the doorways are less clumsy here because the kitchen and the crew quarters and the cargo bay tend to have doors in different locations that aren't just heavily stacked into that one spot like on the CL because they kind of feel squeezed. Uh, they are in, uh, more, more comfortable. Not all the doors go opening to you when you're trying to go to one space, which is important. Once again, if you have the back of the cargo bay open and it's vacating air, uh, you can see here that there is that small window again. Unfortunately, just like the CL, the window is too small. And for some reason, uh, CIG decided to give this thing free, three fridges, it looks like. So these food storage places that in the future will have it where they cannot perish food. As I said, I, I got done saying just a few minutes ago that uh, we're trying to go towards things that are now, not in the future, but we do have to cover both, right? So, uh, <laughs> so uh, one of the things that's a hidden gem of this new kitchen, I guess I'll call it, for the ES that the CL doesn't have as big of, is the window. So it has a nice little styling, just like the CL, but the window. So this thing right here is incredible because you can see through an armored window into where borders would be coming on. So if you have your ramp down and you're unloading cargo and all heck breaks loose, you could fall back to this kitchen, regroup, and keep an eye on that window to see when somebody is hacking the interior door to come attack. Or if somebody might not have that level of intentions, you might have misread the situation. But just in case you did not misread the situation, you can wait, hopefully wait for them to go by and then pop them in the back. <laughs> So um, this window is quite useful. I, I think it'll be very interesting gameplay, to say the least. Uh, it, unfortunately, the crew quarters does not have a window like that, but I had to give a knob or not to do it. Uh, so there is three two-hand weapon and six one-hand weapon stations there. I would also recommend utility gear, because that's closer to the cargo area. And this bench. So this bench and the way the lockers are situated, the CL still has lockers, but they're just not as staggered as what this is. Um, it's interesting to note that this uh, is on here. You'll note the 500 uh, milli SCUs right there. Uh, these are smaller than traditional SCUs, so don't get your hopes up and get excited. Uh, that there's 1500 SCU just chilling in lockers. Uh, but um, for those who know, uh, having a little bit of extra space to get away from your compatriots while you're getting ready is, is very nice. So this is kind of like a ready room I see it as. I don't think these things are well situated. I think there should be shelves inside those padded areas because they're just useless space. Maybe they were meant for people to lean on. I, I, maybe that was the thought. But uh, I, do want, I do want to mention that those should have had shelves on them for storage or cabinets at the top parts. Uh, but anyway, this bench is actually well situated. I think this bench combined with the lockers creates like a mini ready room. And it's a shame there isn't hooks or, la or, or, or cabinets or shelving on those sides to kind of finish the room. There is storage above uh, towards here where the habs are. Uh, not habs, but they're beds that happen to be in the crew habitation quarters. Uh, you can see this half shelf and this full shelf there, uh, but I still feel that that's more for the crew's personal items, not for ready room type gear. It would have been nice. This is the crew's hygiene area. You can note that it has the, the, the toilet, the shower, the sink everything and it, it can close the door which is all very nice it is right on top of where the beds are but that's how it is they could have flipped this around they could have had the bathroom the first thing you walked into and then made the the habitation bed area even bigger note i'm still in love with that window i cannot stress how much i like that window the cl does not have it but something the cl does that this does not is a defensive and safety measure here at the back of the cargo area so aside from the clear fuel tank, which I don't like. Uh, this right here is where you would have a stand-up area on the CL with a small half wall. Now that half wall means that if somebody was chucking uh, something in with a tractor beam too hard, it won't go flying up the staircase. Also, it means that if somebody's shooting into the place when this ramp is open, they won't be able to just hit you. You have a defensive place to get to, where, and then you can retreat down the hallway behind a couple closed doors, give yourself time, grab gear from the crew, 
uh, from the cockpit uh, weapon store and uh, hope for the best or attempt to f fly away, right? I mean, that's the goal in some circumstances. <laughs> but uh, there's some interesting things. Another interesting thing, the remote tractor beam does not seem to... Sorry, the rem this does not have a remote tractor beam. The CL has the remote tractor beam. But the, uh, the remote turret on the base of this ship does not seem to fire when this is on the ground. In this parked position, that weapon system did not fire, despite having a view of outside of the ship, which is quite frustrating, because that's actually a great use case for that weapon. Granted, if it was on top of the ship, would it be better? Sure. But still, it, it would be nice to have that be able to fire, even with the risk of it breaking your landing gears. That's, that's the crew's decision to make that. Especially if there's an enemy attacking you in a, in a vehicle or something like that. Having a, a, a remote turret off of a ship be able to fire while you're still trying to buy yourself time to defend yourself or run away it would be good. Millennium Falcon style. So I think that, uh, you know, it's okay to have a movie reference once in a while. It, it's very, very applicable here. <laughs> uh, the overall viewpoint, though, of the Zeus ES is that it's a beautiful ship. It has a lot of small touches that I think really nail it down. And if you're looking for that large class radar and you're looking for a place to explore, it's not a bad option. And honestly, you don't have to go breaking Ursa's wheels off to make it happen, as long as you're okay with not having proper medical. I want to point out that you can still have a paramed device on board, and if there's any upgraded gear in the future that's heavier, um, we'll see how it goes. These are some of the small touches I think that they did a great job on is that you can literally change the lights inside your small cab uh, sleeping bunk uh, basically uh, that will allow you to do these things and I see this also as a sign of the future for all ships so as I log out of this vessel I look forward to seeing these vessels where you have the crew in mind from the get-go and have their ability to defend themselves run explore have a good time and even log out in style as part of the main consideration. Thank you for your time. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And thank you to my long-term subscribers for sticking around with me. Have a good one.